Hey guys, welcome to Ingo's Restorations. Um, today we're going to be working on my uh, 05 X5 and we're going to be replacing this guy here, the idle control valve. And just for precautionary measures, I'm going to change this to it's uh, the hosing that goes along with it, just in case uh, the one I've got on there now is ripped up. I'm going to go ahead and replace this one. This is part number four. And this particular one is a, a Bosch one that I got from uh, Rock Auto. Okay, so the first step you're going to need to do is you're going to have to take this piece off right here. Uh, don't mind the shooting. My neighbor is uh, shooting his gun, so no big deal. Um, you've got four tabs on each corner. You just take them off with a pair of dykes or some pliers or something like that, and this will come off. And then you've got uh, two 10-millimeter uh, screws. You're going to take this and take off the air box from here. You're going to disconnect this cable, just push down on it. It's one of the typical BMW connectors. You just push down and you just wiggle it off. So I can do this with one hand. <laughs> Let's see. There you go. That comes off. Uh, and it's also connected down here. We're going to disconnect it from here too, so it's out of our way. All right, set that off to the side. Okay, and then we're going to take this uh, clamp off of here and that'll get these pieces off. Okay, I'll show you that in just a minute. Alright guys, um, got those pieces off. Um, got the air filter housing off and got the uh, cold intake off. So uh, I'm going to take this off here right now. Uh, you just got to take this off right here just to give myself more room. Now I'm the kind of person that I, I like to kind of clear out a little bit of area before I go to work. Um, if you, you don't really have to take all that stuff off. If you just want to take off the diesel valve and the, the idle control valve is right, right underneath here. If you just want to do that and leave the air filter box and all that stuff on, that, that's fine too. That, that's up to the way you, uh, you like to work, but I like to clear myself a space out. So right now I'm going to take this off and then I'm going to take off the diesel valve. The diesel valve has uh, torque screws. You can see one right, right here. And you gotta take off this connector. This connector is like is very similar to the other ones. You'll has a little push. You gotta push it and then bring it up, and that's it. So you can see right here, it's got the these where you push these down and it releases the tabs on it, so you can pull these out. So don't try to put a screwdriver and just pry it out. You're gonna break things. So just uh, just take that off, and then it's got one torque here and one here. Yeah, I think that's it. I think it's two 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 torques. So I'm going to take this off, and I take this off, and that'll give me plenty of room to get down in here to the auto control valve. All right, I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so we got the diesel valves. You can see there, there is two screws right here. There are torque screws. So now you can uh, kind of see the auto control valve. This is uh, the inlet right here, and you've got an electrical connector right here. We got to disconnect, uh, and then we've got this. 10 millimeter nut we need to take off and these two torques am I showing it? No, these two torques right here need to come off uh, and then we'll be able to uh, when you got to take obviously this off right here this connector has to come off and uh, right here you can see the clamp, we got to disconnect the clamp here pull this off, disconnect these two torque screws and this 10 millimeter nut right here and then we'll take out the assembly. Obviously, you gotta disconnect this uh, electrical connector here also. Uh, and we'll take it out. We're gonna see if the idle control valve is gonna come out. Uh, so, as you can see, this is the idle control valve. This is the one end that you're looking at right now. You can see the arrows pointing in. So this is in the inlet. And then on the other side, this hose is actually connected right here to this and it goes inside the intake manifold. Sometimes when you pull this out, it will come out by itself and this will stay in place in the intake manifold and sometimes it will come out with it. So uh, we'll have to see how it comes out and then replace it uh, back the same way it came out. All right, I'll show you that in a minute. Well, I got it out. Let's see if we can, if I can get down in there and show you. It looks like. So 
So there it is. See, mine, the uh, that rubber hose stayed in there. So I'm going to have to pull that out. But that's where it sits, is right inside there. Okay, and I am very glad that I took it out because it sounds horrible. So here's the the old one, and here's the new one. I mean, they're identical. And let's see if you can hear this. I don't know if you can hear. I'm shaking it. And this is the new one. You can see there's no no noise. It makes the little clackety noise if you if you move it around. But this one sounds horrible. Absolutely horrible. So I'll go ahead and. Uh, remove this is a, I did buy a new one of these uh, just in case too this is uh, put it here so you can see the part number for it from BMW so that's this bracket that goes right here uh, just in case it was broken you know a lot easier to have this stuff on hand if it's broken and then uh, go ahead and replace it so that's going to go on right here uh, and then we'll put all this bracket and uh, get the other piece out get this piece out of the uh, of the intake manifold, get it all back together and uh, slap it in there. Uh, be back in a bit. So I got the the old piece out. It's right here. Doesn't look too bad. Couldn't see any real cracks or anything in it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace it anyways. Wanted to show you something. Uh, it's kind of neat, I think. Uh, so you see this little notch indentation. That means you can only put this in one way. Let's see if I can show you. Uh, Too much of a mess here. Let's see. If I can get down in there. Let's see if I can give me a little bit of light. So you see that right over there? There's a little tab on that circle on the actual uh, part right there. So the notch on the rubber would go right there. So you can only put this in one way and uh, you won't mess it up going in the wrong direction. So uh, just a little, a little bit of tip of information there for you. So we're going to go ahead and get that uh, put on and uh, go from there. Oh, by the way, one of the other things I want to let you guys know. Uh, one thing that I use quite a bit when it, when it comes to putting on is get yourself a just a little uh, you know a little sprayer and get some water and add a little bit of uh, dishwashing soap to it. Um, and you can use that for uh, for putting on like the hoses and stuff like that. You can put some like I'm gonna put some on on this part right here as I slide it into the manifold. It will make it slippery and everything, and then it will disappear once it gets heated up and everything. It doesn't stick around. It doesn't deteriorate the rubber or anything like that. It'll all go away. So just uh, keep that around. I'll also I'll spray some uh, right in here when I get ready to push this into the uh, the rubber hose. I'll spray a little bit there and uh, help make it a little bit easier to get that in there. All right. So uh, let's start getting this back together. So I just wanted to show you got this back in there so you can see. You can see how that little metal tab sticking out goes right into the groove of the rubber piece right there. So that way it's when it's that they, they obviously have it going in on a certain angle. They want that to go in on a certain angle that that tube as it's going in. And that's why they have that. If not, they just wouldn't even have that thing. They're just maybe a, a bushing or something like that. But there's got to be a reason why they they've got it facing in a certain way, a certain angle. So that that keeps it in the in the right place. So I would put this in first. Um, even if, if, if yours came out with this, I, I don't think I would, uh, try to put it in, uh, with it on here. I think I would always put it on here. That way you have it on the right tab. Okay. So we're, we're uh, ready to rock and roll here. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, go ahead and mount this in there and I'll show you how that looks. Well, I got the, uh, idle control valve back in. Uh, everything went pretty, pretty smooth. Not too bad. All the screws are back in there. Uh, just notice now I've got another issue um, this boot right here I'm not going to squeeze it now but I squeeze it a little bit 
and there's some cracks starting to form right here so um this is the boot that goes into the uh, throttle body from uh, from your intake so this is going into the throttle body and this is the diversion to go into the idle control valve so when the throttle body is closed your air is coming in through the uh, idle control valve but i just now noticed that i've got looks like there's some cracks forming so i'm going to have to replace this this boot right here I'll have to get it ordered and get it on the way over here. Uh, yep, that's the way sometimes things go. You, but it's good when you when you when you're working on these cars. Uh, as you're going through different things, you're, you're going to find different issues and different problems until you get get to a point where you get a lot of the components replaced. That's at least that's my goal. Uh, so I'll get this ordered up. So uh, I think I'll end the video here. You saw how, how all this comes off. The, the rest of it, putting it back on together, it shouldn't be a big issue. Uh, but uh, that should be it. Well, thanks for, uh, for watching. Uh, subscribe if you like uh, the content that I do. And uh, give me a thumbs up. Thank you.